Welcome to the MS Perspective podcast. Perspective with a K, as I'm German. I'm Nele Hansberger, MS patient, patient advocate and author. I'm bringing you interviews, inspiration and information about living with multiple sclerosis and show you ways how you can positively influence the disease and make the best out of your diagnosis. On ms-perspective.com, you will find the show notes, 11 free tips as a PDF, and lots of other information. And now the show begins. This podcast is supported by MidMission, a project of the nonprofit Herdy Foundation. Hello and welcome to episode number 27, Living with MS in Poland, an interview with Dominika czarnota Swolkowska. Dominika is actually not a patient, but the Secretary General of the Polish Multiple Sclerosis Society in Warsaw. And now enjoy the interview. Hello, Dominika. Warm welcome to Warsaw in Poland. And it's very lovely to have you today on the show. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, lovely to, to be here today. And um, warm greetings to Germany. Thank you very much. Before we start with the actual interview, it would be lovely if you could introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, so my name is Dominika czarnota Szopkowska. I'm a Secretary General of Polish MS uh, Society. I'm also a psychologist. I did the postgraduate study in neuropsychology. Uh, I'm a wife, a mother of a seven-year-old boy named Gustav. Um, what else? I love spending time with my family and friends uh, in uh, general, um, I also um, think that relationships are uh, of a great importance to me. Um, I believe we should uh, appreciate the good moments in our lives that we have, especially the one we have with, uh, with our close ones, uh, because memories of them will help us to deal with the bad moments uh, someday. And the bad moments uh, happens to all of us. Uh, what else? I like traveling, but frankly speaking, I'm a lazy traveler. Uh, I like when it's comfortable. So uh, definitely no hiking with a tent. <laughs> um, and um, one of my strange hobbies <laughs> is watching uh, American crime series in German. <laughs> Uh, and it's in German because uh, then I consider it not as a pure waste of time, but <laughs> a practice of a foreign language, you know. Okay, so we could have done the interview in German, no, but that wouldn't make sense for the uh, English yeah. podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was your personal motivation to work for the Polish Multiple Sclerosis Society? So I started working at the information center Uh, of the Polish MS Society when I was still a psychology student. And at that time, I thought it was a great opportunity for me to uh, learn about the needs of people living with MS and how I can support uh, patients with neurological diseases. And I stayed. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds like you really liked the job. Yeah, that's true. I like it. Uh, As a psychologist and neuropsychologist, in your experience, what are some of the most effective coping strategies or self-care practices for managing the daily challenges of living with MS? Well, people have different strategies for coping with difficulties uh, in their lives. And the one that works for them uh, depends main mainly on uh, their personality, uh, life experience, and Uh, the support of the close ones. Uh, the kind of support they're receiving, if they're receiving any support. Um, in my opinion, the uh, avoidance strategy is certainly the, uh, the least productive one. Um, Polish MS Society is often approached by uh, relatives or friends of people living with MS, asking how they can help their children, their partner, their their friend, uh, who sometimes does not even want to discuss the, the treatment, not 
mentioning uh, emotions. They are in this difficult moment in, in their life. I think depression is depression is a very uh, serious and very complex topic when it comes to MS. Um, the hardest thing is uh, to help people who refuse to be helped. And um, I believe that the the attitude towards the daily challenges is of uh, great importance uh, in dealing with the disease. Um, what I would recommend to everyone is to uh, look for a professional support and also uh, to take care of relationships with the loved ones that we have. Yeah, absolutely. So going a bit uh, deeper into the direction of uh, the mental health, do, how uh, important do you think is it and the emotional well-being for the individuals with MS and what support is available in this regard in Poland? I believe mental health is uh, is crucial, is the most important thing in life, whether you have MS or not. Uh, you can be a happy person in a wheelchair or a very unhappy person with uh, uh, zero on EDSS scale. I don't know if you know what I mean. And anxiety and depression is, as I mentioned before, when it when it comes to MS, it's a very complex subject. And it can depend on many factors. And we should remember that. It can be a, a reaction Uh, to the disease, to diagnosis, to uh, uh, worsening or to daily difficulties. But it also might be a symptom of the disease. Yeah, absolutely. Um, coming to the treatment and care in Poland, what types of MS treatment therapies or interventions are more commonly recommended or accessible in Poland? For example, certain types of uh, disease-modifying therapies, stem cell therapy, rehab. Um, stem cells used to be very um, popular, so to say, among patients. It's it's not that reimbursement, uh, uh, reimbursed, uh, sorry, treatment in Poland, and I also think it's not that popular anymore. Uh, and when it comes to DMTs, all of them are now available and reimbursed. Last year, uh, four new drugs were reimbursed. And access to so-called um, second-line treatment is now much easier than it used to be. Great. In, in second-line treatment, the, the, the drugs that are that are available only in the second line treatment is um, natalizumab and fingolimod. So all the other drugs are basically available already as the first line treatment. So um, it's, it's a huge change. Um, the problem is still the waiting time for the therapy to start. And it looks different in different parts of the country. Uh, and rehabilitation is also an issue. There is a limited availability and lack of comprehensiveness. Neurorehabilitation is uh, particularly lacking. This, this is a huge problem. And there is a so sh shortage. Sorry, there is a shortage of psychologists and neuropsychologists in hospitals. We already mentioned the the uh, mental health, so uh, that's also a huge problem. Okay, and um, what do you mean by waiting time for the DMTs? Uh, can you just give an example? I mean, I, I, I don't know because it's different, probably. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty complicated. It's how the 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 system works here. Uh, you receive the DMTs in uh, one of the hospitals. It's 130 hospitals in whole Poland. Uh, that where the, the DMTs are available, 
but it's so-called treatment program. So you need to access the treatment program. Um, and that's the, that's the problem. So uh, if there's not, not enough neurologists or too many patients uh, willing to be treated in this one particular hospital or there is one hospital in, I don't know, 200 kilometers. Uh, so everyone try to get the treatment in this particular hospital. Uh, then the waiting time is, is longer. It depends very much on how the, uh, the work is organized in this particular hospital. Okay. And does it mean like one year, five years? And no, 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 no. <laughs> Usually, um, few weeks or few months. If it's longer than, let's say, three months or four months, we recommend to just change the hospital. I would say four months, it's, it's, it's very long. But does it mean when you are in the cycle of getting your DMT, then it's all fine and it's just at the beginning or qu can that happen in between? Beginning. Okay, it's only, but okay. But I mean, yes, it's it would be great if you could start, but waiting for three or four months is not nice, but it's it's okay-ish, I would say, in, in the international um, comparison. But of course, you always want to start directly, but um, just from, from, let's say, a far away standpoint, where I think I heard in, in UK sometimes it can be you get your diagnosis and then you start a year later with your DMT. Three, three to four months doesn't sound too bad. Well, you know, actually, <laughs> there was this research. Uh, it was done before COVID, so around 2019. And the average waiting time to get the treatment in Poland was, I think, 14 months. Oh, okay. So hopefully it has changed now, but... I'm not sure, and we're planning to do a research uh, at the beginning of the next year to find out how all the changes, the, this new treatment program with all those new drugs, how it works. Okay. So what's the waiting time and so on. Yeah. But yeah, it used to be oh, a long time. <laughs> Sounds like, yes. Are there any specific laws or regulations in Poland that protect the rights and promote the well-being of individuals living with MS? Uh, not living with MS. Uh, there's uh, the labor law that in theory protects people with disabilities. But frankly speaking, much depends on the attitude of the employers. Yeah, I think it's the same everywhere. Uh, can you share any recent advancements or developments in MS treatment uh, care or support in Poland that you find particularly promising? I mean, you said already DMTs are all available and just for the two Fingolimod and Natalizumab, it's it's kind of like second line. The other ones are available as, of course, with the things that you might have to wait for a while. But are there any other um, advancements? Yes, there is also a pilot program of coordinated care in MS, uh, which includes the care of other specialists in one place, uh, not only uh, a neurologist and MS nurse, for example, urologist, psychologist, physiotherapist. So it's not that you need to seek for the treatment in, in different places. It's supposed to be in one place. But uh, as I mentioned, it's it's a pilot program, so we'll see how it works. But that sounds good. I mean, that's, that's really um, nice. Uh, can you provide an overview of the healthcare system in Poland and how it supports individuals living with MS? I mean, you, you went into some details, but maybe giving an overview? Yeah, so the healthcare system in Poland is very bureaucratic. And in my opinion, rather unfriendly to patients. Uh, patients are often uninformed. They don't know where to look for support. Uh, they don't get, get enough support. 
for example, uh, people very often don't know uh, in which hospitals or which hospitals run this DMT, DMT's therapy. Uh, and the issue of psychological and neuro neuropsychological support is very neglected. Uh, often people, after the diagnosis, after receiving diagnosis, are left on their own. And I think this is the problem. Okay, so it doesn't sound, uh, yeah, so it doesn't sound nice. I guess it's uh, some point where the MS Society tries to support and help as much as possible. What types of healthcare professionals are typically involved in the care and management of MS in Poland, and what role do they play? I would say uh, it's mostly a neurologist and um, MS nurses, but not like in UK. The role of MS nurses, unfortunately, in Poland is not that high. We hope to change it. But um, for now, it's mostly the neurologist. Okay. And I think that that's a, that's the problem because the specialists they're supposed to work with one another. Not that you are going to one neuro to, to neurologist and he or she says something, and then you go to let's say gynecologist and she or he says something different. Like you should quit, for example, your uh, treatment before getting pregnant. Yep. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. They should Absolutely. discuss with one another. Not that. That the yeah. patient's supposed to decide who has right. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, we we have uh, some 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 special MS center here in Germany where they try to gather all the data and give advice. And of course, a neurologist always keep asking these uh, kind of questions to ladies, but of course as well to men, as there are some treatments that are maybe dangerous for for men when they want to become dads. <laughs> So that is a very important uh, part of life, especially with a diagnosis between 20 to 40, which I guess is the same in Poland. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are there any specific resources or support networks available for MS patients in Poland, um, like your patient association or any other community organizations? Yes, yeah, so I hope Polish MS Society is such a... Um, resource for for patients, our website or our Facebook website. And um, so it's it's if you want if you want to know uh, what's our website www.ptsr.org.pl. Um, but there's also this uh, organizations that organization that called um, uh, info. It's called Multiple Sclerosis Info. And it's, it's run actually by the patients. We cooperating with them very closely. And I also recommend them as a source of uh, okay. proved knowledge. Great. And, and I will uh, put both of them into, of course, the show notes and the blog article. So if you out there um, was not were not writing it down <laughs> or checking it directly, you can you can go and use the link. Are there any uh, are there additional challenges to living with MS when you are over sixty? I mean, that's something people are starting to look into. I guess in all countries, but maybe just that question to Poland. Well, it's definitely hard to be a person with MS uh, after uh, sixty. Um, unfortunately, often these people did not have a chance to uh, receive any effective treatment uh, before uh, at an earlier stages of the disease. And now are they are not eligible for the treatment. Uh, it's not because of the age. It's it's because they are often not relapsing, remitting anymore. Um, they have to deal with comorbidities that comes with age, and that's also a challenge. And then you sometimes you you don't know whether it's a symptom of MS or maybe of some other diseases. Um, 
well, and the pension benefits are low in Poland. So, okay, thank you for that. Uh, are there any specific initiatives or programs in Poland that focus on raising awareness about MS and educating the public about the condition? Um, yeah, so uh, um, we are trying to to run such a um, campaigns. Uh, and also other organizations, the one I mentioned before. And there is also this foundation called um, MS Fight for Yourself. Um, they also they are, they are focused mo mostly on um, education and disinformation campaigns. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. But I mean, that's good already. I mean, three, uh, three organizations trying to do something because I think everywhere in the world, it's important that uh, the normal, yeah, normal society <laughs> uh, gets a bit to know about uh, the condition of MS and all the um, invisible symptoms, for example. Yeah, that's true. I think the how, uh, how the general public sees uh Uh, people with MS, it's uh, it's it's very important. Um, how they see their colleagues uh, at work having MS, their friends, their I don't know, boyfriends or girlfriends. So, educating the general public is very important. Absolutely. What do you think? How can individuals with MS in Poland active, actively advocate for themselves and ensure that they receive appropriate care as much as it possible, support and accommodations? Um, well, it depends. There are some people who try to be active on YouTube, for example, um, on their own names. They are... Um, trying to show uh, how it how it is to live with MS on daily basis. But uh, I also recommend to um, support Polish MS Society. It's, it's good to have MS advocates among people uh, living with MS. Not only that people not... Uh, living with MS, discussing MS like, like me, it's good to have also people who are experiencing the disease on a daily basis. But frankly speaking, not, not many people want to um, discuss it in public. For many people, they try MS to be just like small part of their everyday life. They don't want to... Um, Yeah, be too much focus on the disease when there are so many different things to do in life. And this is actually, I think, a very good approach if you have the right treatment, you're not experiencing the symptoms or just very little of them. It's, it's, it's good to not to be too much focus on the disease. Yes, live your life and, uh, I mean, try to get your best treatment, but live live your life and don't concentrate too much on MS. So, yeah, absolutely true. What role do family members and caregivers play in supporting individuals with MS in Poland and what resources are available to support them? I mean, you mentioned at the beginning, very often you get contacted by, by them. Um, are there any special... I don't know, uh, talking groups or educational things or and, and how much do they need to, to help their beloved ones? Well, um, I think there is uh, very little support for the caregivers in terms of their well-being, but also in terms of education, how they can support their loved ones. Um, uh, we had last year we had this workshop for um, uh, MS caregivers. Uh, it was run by Polish MS Society, uh, and also we're planning to uh, focus more on supporting uh, parents of uh, children living with MS and also young adults because very often those are not 
officially <laughs> children anymore, like in their early 20s, but they are still very much um, um, depending on their parents also emotionally, and the parents are very uh, much in their lives still. Um, but yeah, the problem is that the support for caregivers is, I would say, not existing actually. Um, like, um, in in healthcare system or on a public level. No. Sounds like there are some challenges to overcome in the next years. <laughs> yeah, that's Hopefully. true. That's true. But it's um, um. I don't want I want I don't want it to sound so negative because I think um like even my organization it's the biggest organization in 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 Poland uh we offer quite a lot of initiatives and for example the workshop I mentioned for the caregivers but Uh, we regularly organizing workshops for young people with MS, uh, for women planning pregnancy. Uh, it's called Being Mom with MS. And um, our permanent activities include uh, free support of neurologists, psychologists, lawyers, social worker, uh, nutrition, and MS nurse. Um, so I think there, there is quite a lot of help that you can receive if it's not from the uh, government, if it's not from the healthcare system, it's from, uh, from Polish MS society. Uh, for example, we regularly, now it's very popular since COVID time, we organize various types of, um, webinars and soon uh, we will have a webinar with a pharmacist. Pharmacist, yeah, on uh, supplements and uh, OTC drugs. Uh, in our branches, they are organizing additional rehabilitation. So um, I hope it sounds a little bit more positive. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds good and, and uh, puts the thing into a picture. And of course, it sounds like you did already do quite some progress. And of course, I, I think everywhere, you know, uh, doesn't matter on, on which level of MS care we are, we always want to go further. And that's good. That's good. What advice would you give to individuals with MS in Poland who may be feeling overwhelmed or discouraged, which can happen quite often at the beginning? And how can they maintain a positive outlook? Well, I would suggest them to first maybe contact us. We have this uh, helpline operating five days a week. Uh, you can, I already mentioned uh, the psychologist that we have. They are uh, free of charge, available free of charge. And it can be just the beginning of um, dealing with with MS in terms of like mental health and organizing your life with MS because at the beginning it's very difficult. People very often, they stop experiencing symptoms, but they know they have the disease. And the question is, how am I going to live with it? And then the answer is very often like you did before. And then the people are like, No, what do you mean? I mean, I'm, I, I need some kind of, you know, help, support, guidance, guidance. And this is actually something that you need to figure out uh, on your own. I mean, we provide the support of like this additional uh, consultations with neurologists, the psychologists, all those specialists. We can support you. But at the end, You need to learn how to live with MS on your own. What is very important is that you need to um, start the treatment. And this is also something that um, we try to educate people about. Treatment is crucial. You, you can't, uh, I already mentioned this, this uh, approach of um, uh, 
people trying to, to forget about the disease, not talking about the disease, not even starting the treatment. It's the, the worst coping strategy um, because there is this disease and either you do something about this or it's going to get worse. Absolutely, yes. And that's something I, I consider as one of the most important pillars as well, uh, treatment. And of course, together with and with with a healthy lifestyle, with uh, good mental health, with doing some sports regularly, good diet, all these things, and trying to stay as active as much as possible, um, trying to stay in work life and and all that. But without treatment, that's it's it's really a serious disease. And even so, we can treat it nowadays very good with treatment. Without treatment, normally the let's say natural path is not a nice one, yeah, and you don't exactly. want to end up there. Exactly. Okay, so let's come to the quick fire Q and A session. Complete the sentence for me. Multiple sclerosis is is a disease that is getting. Uh, easier to deal with, to live with. And I think it's something that brings hope. I know if you are newly diagnosed, you might not see it, but I'm working for Polish Mass Society for over 13 years now. And I see those changes happening, not only in Poland, but in the world generally, especially when it comes to medicine. We have so many new drugs and they are more and more effective. And that's, that's really something. You know? Absolutely. Um, yes, the websites you already recommended. So I will <laughs> put them in there. You, you answered already my quick fire <laughs> question there. What development would you like to see in the field of multiple sclerosis in the next five years? Um, so I hope that the new drugs um, are um, um, are going to be even more effective than they are today and safer to use and um, that they will not affect every day, everyday life uh, in a negative way of people living with MS. So they can do whatever they want, travel wherever they uh, want, and um, uh, starting family if they want. Yeah. Finally, what message of hope or encouragement would you like to share with the individuals living with MS in Poland? Um, one, well, you have only one life. Uh, don't give up on it. Uh, fight for your happiness. We say um, we have to play with the cards that the fate has given us. Um, and sometimes uh, you need to be proactive to achieve that. And this is something I, I encourage people to do. So be proactive and uh, live your life. Yes. And you can you can do that even with... Ugly symptoms. I, I know now quite a lot of uh, people who have a progressive state of MS because uh, there was not a high effective treatment back then, but they are active and they are in their family life. They are maybe active in um, social work and things like that. And they enjoy life at its best, of course, with some limitations, but they don't concentrate on the limitations. They concentrate on the things they can do. And I think that's something very, very important. And if you have issues with your mental health, please try to get some help for that. Um, how can, how and where can interested people find you online, Dominica? Is it, I mean, can, can people directly uh, contact you or is it just the, not just, <laughs> or is it the MS Society Poland? <laughs> so. Well, if you contact MS Society Poland, they can ask to, um, to contact me to um, either on the phone or um, I think my email address is on the website. If not, then you can always ask for the email address. It's official, so no problem. 
Fantastic. Dominika, thank you very much for that great interview. Thank you for all that inside view into MS Care and um, your supporting system in Poland. And yeah, I hope uh, pr uh, progression in the positive way <laughs> uh, keeps keeps on going. And thank you for everything you've reached uh, so far already with all your colleagues in the MS Society in Poland. And yeah, uh, greetings to lovely Warsaw. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the interview and learned something new about how it is to live with MS in Poland. Or maybe if you want to go there or have some inspiration on what you can do. By the way, next time, it's all about clearing the fog, understanding vision problems and multiple sclerosis. And this episode will be on the topic to uncover the impact of multiple sclerosis on vision problems, their causes and effective management strategies. So I'm looking forward that you are tuning in and hear you next time. Thank you for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. You may also be interested in the previously published episodes and posts, which you can find at ms-perspective.com slash podcast perspective with a K. You can also get a free PDF with 11 tips for your positive impact on MS at ms-perspective.com slash newsletter. If you'd like to get in touch, you can reach me at nele at ms-perspective.com or on social media. Hear you next time.